All right, so what we're going to do for a second, we're going to take a little sidebar. And let me see if YouTube got me back online here. Okay, yes, the warning went away, so I'm still assuming we're okay. Uh, by the way, I still see a few viewers out there, so please don't hesitate to say hi. Um, I'm here to help you guys. So, And while you're at it, please like the video and please, please subscribe. So I'm going to bring back um, this little sheet that had the shapes on it, and we're going to talk about that a little more. And the warning just popped back up. YouTube. So here's how I like to look at the different shapes. Um, if you notice, the area of a circle is pi r squared. Okay. And the area of a cube is the length times the width times the height. The length here, the width there, the height there. So what we have on the circle is a radius, and we have the radius squared times pi. Now I'm mentioning that because if you know the area of a circle, so the question is, do you have to memorize all these? You probably should. What I'm going to try to do is try to explain a way to kind of just become one with all the shapes and figure out their volumes and areas as well. Okay? So this was a 2D shape, a length times a width. We also talked about the scenario where it could be the base times the height in the case of, say, a, a, a parallelogram that's shaped like this. So to go 3D, right, to go 3D, we have a length times a width. We have the height here. So, so we get cubic units on this, something like this. All the ones on the top are square units. The ones at the bottom are cubic units. All right? So there's uh, something weird that happens between the circle and the cylinder, okay? If you notice, this is no longer the area, but we get um, pi r squared h. So if you look at it, the ends of the cylinder are, are circles. So what you're basically doing is computing the area of the end and then multiplying it theoretically infinite times by the height. In other words, how many, how many of those circles can fit between the height? I don't want to really get into that because that's more like how many angels are dancing on the pin of the head, head of a pin rather. Um, but it's just a way to remember that if the end has a circle, to get the volume, you're going to multiply it by that whole height, right? The height's over here. Okay, so I went from the area of a circle to the volume of a cylinder. All right, then what I like to do is come over to here to the cone. And I have the volume of that is one third pi r squared h. So it's the same as the volume of the cylinder, but it's a third of it. And I almost kind of like to draw that because if, if I had the cylinder, I kind of like to think of the cone in there. That should have been there. And it's kind of split up into three parts. Now, physically, it's not this way, but that's how I like to look at it. And then, then if, if this is pi r squared, and this is pi r squared times the height, then the cone is pi r squared times the height, a third of it. All right? And then the sphere, I memorize the same way because we have pi r squared here. And then we have the radius, because it's circular, the radius is not just going two directions now, it's really going three directions. So we have pi r cubed. And then because I just memorized that that was a third, then this is four thirds. It's got to be bigger. It's got to be bigger than that. And I almost kind of draw it around here like this. Okay, so at the volume, the cylinder was just pi r squared h. Then the sphere has an extra radius going a third dimension. And since the cone was one third, then this has to be four thirds. 
Okay, and on that same note, the triangular pyramid is also length times width times height. If you go back to the original cube over here, okay, and a third of it. So we can almost argue the same kind of thing I did with the cylinder. I can do with the cube to get the triangle of the pyramid, right? And the base, the base is going to be a square, and it meets in an apex. So there's four sides around here. So if I was to draw it inside of here, you could argue it makes the three kind of three parts again. It actually makes more than three parts, but if you could do the mapping between the cylinder and the uh, the cone, then the the triangular pyramid just works the same way. There's a whole bunch of other shapes here as well, because there's also the um, a rectangular prism as well, um, which they don't seem to do very often. And that's really just your length times your width times your height divided by two. Because what you're going to do is take take you're going to take your your rectangular prism or your cube or whatever, and and cut it in half a lot so there's a whole top half you're throwing away and then the bottom half you're keeping so you still have the same length width and height except you're tossing off one half of it you're slicing it lengthwise from the diagonals to the other side on the other diagonal as well so you're going to throw all of that way so some of this a bit makes sense um, and it's kind of a way to just not have to memorize this kind of thing because even my, I myself, I don't use cones every day. So it just becomes an easy way to remember, oh, if I can base the cylinder off the circle, and I'll base the cone off the cylinder. And I'll base the right, tri right the triangle pyramid off how the cone works off of the cube. So it's kind of complicated, but it's, it, it just takes seconds at that point. Um, and as long as we're on this, this slide, um, this could come in handy. Um, I trying to remember where I got this this um, document from in the first place. I think it's from the SAT. Um, this can come up also on the SHSAT. <coughs> we just saw the case where there's um, um, a, a three, four, five right triangle. And in this case, we can, this is x, right? x times the square root of 3, and then 2x. And this turns out to be a 30, 60, 90 triangle. So those don't really come up often on the Shazat, and they will not give you a Shazat question on purpose that requires you to have knowledge of a 30, 60, 90 triangle. But if it happens to arbitrarily slash randomly come up, this is something you should know how to do. So you have 1, 2, the square root of 3. Okay? And there's just go in order. One, two, the square root of three. All right. And the one map goes is across from the one is across from the thirty. So if you just go counterclockwise, it's easy to remember. Here's another one where both angles are forty-five, and you get one, one, the square root of two. So again, these are both triangles that you should memorize and get used to. And the Shazad again, they're not going to say. There's a 45 degree triangle, there's a 30, 69 degree triangle. But they might give us some sort of geometric uh, thing where you have to figure out a bunch of angles based on something. And one of the inner subshapes shapes that you have to come to a realization about is that it might, they might tell you it's an isosceles triangle or something like that. And it may turn out that the, that, that isosceles triangle is a 45, 45, 90 triangle on top of it. And then from there, if you, if you know things like that, so if you, you might be able to compute a diagonal or the length of a side of something when they give one of these contrived shapes where they're, they're asking for the length of a side or an angle or something like that. If you know these things, and there's more rules than just these two, but if you know these two, you, you, you can get a reasonable uh, situation set up. So I really just wanted to show how you can go from the area of the circle to the volume of a cylinder to the volume of a cone. And then the sphere is larger. And then the, the triangular prism matches the one-thirdness of, of the cube. And it all, it all just falls into place. And if you just stare at this once or twice, uh, that's it. It sticks with you for the rest of your life. The same as something like this, 1, 1 squared or 2. 
one, two, square root of three. It, it's not hard stuff. Three, four, five, right triangle. And there's other right triangles you should know about as well. So we just took a sidebar into this kind of thing. In fact, I might spin this off into an excerpt uh, stream uh, just to try to kind of touch base on some of that. And it's because it, I keep bringing up examples about number sense, about how to relate back and forth between uh, what you're being asked to do and just common stuff like um, if you have a hundred, a hundred, you know, twelve times ten, all you have to do is add a zero on that. You you don't need to go through and and do do something like this. That's just no hesitation math. You should just know straight up that's 120. Just just like if you if you know your perfect squares, you should know what that equals. 13 times 13. It's just these these all comes up so often that it should just be second nature. So just trying to show you kind of a logical approach um, to getting some of these uh, formulas memorized or or at least maybe understanding them a little better. Um, even though my my descriptions are not probably technically accurate or conceptually accurate. But it's an easy, quick way to just, you could just now just generate all this just by knowing that the area is pi r squared and everything else just falls into place and knowing that this is length times width. Okay?